Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris, man. And as always, I thank you for coming to my channel and my talk show, Tell It Like It Is. I'm your host, Morris, man, and my co-host is... Joseph Spencer. So we're going to do this today. We're going to talk about, and before I even talk about or even tell you the topic, I'm going to say this. Because I kind of got my bullet points together as far as organizing my thoughts. The thoughts and opinions that are expressed on this show is not to take sides. It's just to give opinions, give some thoughts, and perhaps some solution to some of the problems. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about how to organize. And by no means we're experts in this, but how to organize protests. Because, unfortunately, for the last two years or so, there's been a rash of law enforcement or police-related shootings and deaths and there are a lot of angry people out there and they got a right to be angry and they're protesting and expressing their pain as far as their dissatisfaction of how law enforcement and some and not all how they treat young black men you know killing them so we're going to talk about you know our opinions and our thoughts and uh, opinions and recommendations for protesting because I'm a product of the 60s. Joe is a product of, you know, of that era. Yeah. You know, and let me say this and then I'm going to turn it over to Joe so I can get this going. You know, I look at what I see on the news from New York and Chicago and I look at the protesting that's going on. And there's some things that immediately jump out at me that really disturbs me. And the first one is these people that are protesting, bringing their children to the protest. You know, in Dallas, when those five police officers unfortunately lost their lives due to a uh, gunman, a sniper, I seen young black women carrying babies, running. You do not bring your children to protest. You know, even if it, you think it's going to be a, 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 a innocent protest or a safe one, you don't know. You don't know what's going to transpire when you go out there, especially when you're dealing with topics of that nature and protesting the topics of that nature. So, you know, uh, it's not a good idea to do that. And I noticed the majority of the people that are organizing, and I commend you for this, they're very young. I mean, very young. I, I, one uh, interview, one person on the news interview, one of the organizers, she was 16. And it's like, uh, not trying to be uh, negative, but what does a 16-year-old know about organizing a protest for a serious cause? And again, I commend you young folks for going out there and, and trying to voice your opinion and be seen and be heard. But there's some things that definitely need to be, as far as organizing protests, need to be looked at and, and need to be followed out. But before I kind of continue my recommendations, I'm going to turn it over to Joe. And Joe going to give us some insight because Joe was around during the 60s with the Martin Luther King protests, and he was in some of these events. He was a part of that movement. So he's going to share some of his insight and experiences regarding protesting. Take it over, Joe. Uh, when, uh, you, you have two groups of people, people who uh, are really interested in the cause. And then you have people usually are from out of town or people on the fringe of movement to come and cause trouble. You have people who cause trouble who want to be seen. They have nothing to do with the protests whatsoever, but they want to raise some hell. Good point. And uh, uh, when, you, when you have unguided kids with babies, like he said, I think it's wrong, too. You're putting yourself in harm's way, and you're putting your children in harm's way. Now, I know why a lot of people do that, bring their children, is because if you have your children with you, it's more of a peaceful thing. I'm not here to cause trouble or violence. Look, I have my child with me. And children also should have get some kind of exposure to what's around them politically and religiously. You have people who go to demonstrations to raise hell. That's their job. I don't know if they sociopaths or they just want to be seen. Protesting is, an, is a right of all Americans. You shouldn't try to abuse it. It does get things done, but it takes a while to do things, especially if you have a, a, a subject matter that's been ignored for years and it's part of the politics of them doing it. Now, I have black friends who say that white people are not treated like black people are. 
And that's not true. You really just don't hear about it. If you're a particular minority white, I'm not going to mention these races, because I used to think all white people are white people, but if you're a wasp, you know these people I'm speaking of. You know, they do beat the hell out of particular white boys. They may not be shooting them, and if they do shoot them, it's not put in the news. There are probably more black kids, black young men, that have been shot that don't hit the news. It's not high profile. You know, the news is about high profile news. Americans are Americans. We all were born here. It's the only country that you can be an American in and not French or German or English. I had an English friend that told me, uh, Joseph, even, even you can be English, but you never could be British. And he explained to me the difference between being British, a Brit, and being English, which makes sense. But all of us, I don't care if you're Indian, black, white, you are an American. Treat your heritage with respect. You have to learn to protect your American brothers. May they be white, black, Chinese, Puerto Rican, or what it is. Whatever it is. We all have to learn that we are Americans and there are particular countries that don't like American. I don't care what I've had uh, uh, had uh, black people tell me that the Khomeini were going to mess with them because they were black. And I'm looking at them and say, no, you're American and you're Christian. Okay, you know? if I can interject now. Uh, I want to kind of give some, uh, I guess, bullet points as far as things that we might need to be aware of and how to be effective when you're trying to get your point across. Because, again, this is just solely my opinion. Whenever, unfortunately, an incident goes down with the law enforcement regarding young black men, people come out in droves the next day, get news coverage with this sign, stop the killing. That's great. But to be, to be honest and, and real, that doesn't do anything other than provide news coverage for that event. And then once the day passes, it goes back to shooting and killing and abusing again. So what do we do as a group of people to say, you know, enough is enough, and we have to start to try to do some things to curve that. And here is one of them, because we talked about this a couple of months ago. Especially young black people, when you're driving your car, focus on driving your car. Stop texting while you're driving, stop eating while you're driving, stop having these in-depth, deep conversations with other people in the car that's distracting you from, from driving. Get on the road, obey the rules, use your turn signals, Make sure your brake lights are working. Make sure your stickers are uh, not expired. Because every other month, actually I do it sooner than that, I check my brake lights. I make sure that my brake lights are working. So I won't have anybody pulling me over anytime soon regarding issues doing re regarding my car. A lot of incidents spun from routine traffic stops. So we need to stop them from pulling us over. Because I'm going to try to make this short. Because it's a lot of stuff that I want to kind of, you know, as far as, information that I want to provide here then I'm going to turn it back over to you a lot of us don't realize that when cities make their budget now nowadays versus 70 uh, 70 years ago 50 years ago they factor in revenue from writing tickets and other uh, traffic related incidents so they actually anticipating that money we need to break that money up and stop allowing them to pull us over because we have a broken tail light. Get your tail light fixed. Make sure your brake lights work. Make sure everything works in your car so we can start to eliminate them pulling us over because unfortunately, it's sometimes like with the Susan Bland case, unfortunately, it started with I just didn't turn use my turn signal. It escalated to being incarcerated and then being perhaps murdered. So we have to say, you know what? We need to stop this. We need to be more focused on, you're not getting any of my money. Because I'm going to say this, and there are a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies will not really confirm this. And I understand because they have a job. They have a mandate handed down to them, and they're supposed to enforce it. That's their job. It's not like they go out there and say, I'm going to write my own laws, and this is how I'm going to do it. Everybody has a boss. And the boss is telling them, go out there and write tickets and find ways to generate revenue for the city. For the city. We need to stop that because, again, if you're doing what you're supposed to do in most cases, because sometimes you could be doing it to the letter and you still get harassed or pull over, we need to concentrate on taking or uh, shedding that down as far as, again, uh, 
I'm being pulled over because my tail light is broke. I'm being pulled over because I didn't signal. Because whenever I'm in a, a, a very unfamiliar territory, and even when I'm in familiar territory, Joe, I make sure that I obey the laws because I'm like, maybe in this town, they will get you if you don't turn, put your turn signal on. In other towns, it's like, we don't care about that. So it's up to us to start focusing on things that will stop this. Because here's a, another thing that we need to, to be concerned about, or should you know, because most of us don't know this. And it's this. When they train you in the, uh, in the police academy, when you draw your gun, it's with intention to inflict deadly force. It's not to shoot you in the leg. You know, so we have to be mindful of that. When that goes down and the guns are drawn, it's like, uh, you know, we, uh, if, if we have to, we're going to kill you. You know, so we as a group of people got to say, you know what, we got to be one step of, of the situation so there won't be a situation caused. Because, again, a lot of this spun from routine traffic stops. So, you know, you can't be out there riding as they stay dirty. You know, that eliminate a great deal of of uh, of the revenue. And then I'm just say this and turn it over to Joe. Another thing that we need to do because, again, most of us don't know what we know, that when we're doing these protesting things and we're out there with the signs and disrupting traffic and people that's just honestly trying to get back and forth to work. They got nothing to do with this, but they get caught up in this. That should stop. And then, you know, you see them now, the protesters taunting the police all in their face. Taunting the police. That ain't a good thing because now you look like the aggressor. And it's like, aren't you here for a peace rally as opposed to I'm tr trying to be the aggressor? And another thing, the most important thing, if you don't take anything else out of here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Joe, is this. You hurt people cause this, or should I say you break up the nonsense when you hit them in the wallet. So when still all this protesting with the signs, which, you know, it's not really going to yield anything but some news coverage, we need to say this like Martin Luther King did back in the day. We need to hit them in the wallet, and we can do that by boycotting a good example, transportation. Stop riding the trains and buses for a month. You know how much revenue that the city loses if you do that? That's what we need to focus on is still out there screaming at the top of our lungs with, with signs because nothing gets done when you do that other than you get noticed, and then the next day it's back to business as usual. So I, I would suggest these people that are doing these, these uh, organizing these protests – you need to organize a boycott. You know, uh, there's enough people to get cars and means to get back and forth and help other pe people get back and forth to work for a week or a month, you know, so we can shut down the, 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 the transit system and they lose all this money. Then they're going to be, be uh, uh, more than willing to listen to you and try to work things out and get things back the way they were without people getting killed. So on that note, I'm turning it back over to Joe. One more time. And also, uh, uh, you have to also note that you cannot smoke blunts in your car. You cannot have a blunt and and, and some and some martel while you driving no. and playing loud music. You can't even hear if the police pulling up on you or not. You know, you 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 have to learn to give these police officers uh, 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 some respect. Also, you know, you hey, you, you can't be disrespectful of somebody who's afraid of you in the first place because they feel they're going to get shot. It's not all the policeman's fault. They, they, they see what's going on the street because they're on the street policing. You know, the other day I'm watching the news and they're, and they're talking about uh, they're going to have a hit squad on our policemen. These men are people's sons, daughters, fathers, grandparents. They support their families like everybody else. You know, you can't, two wrongs don't make a right. Absolutely. Don't make a right. You know, if you're doing something illegal, don't trust. It, it's the police's job to stop you if you're doing something illegal. You that oh, I I, I don't I want to make this four thousand dollars, and he's trying. I'm doing illegal, and he's trying to stop me. So, but I'm gonna shoot him. That doesn't make any sense at all. If you're doing something illegal, everybody's business is nobody's business. If you know you're gonna get busted, the odds are against you. Don't do nothing illegal, or do uh, devise a way that you're not gonna get caught. But if you stay into something illegal long enough, you're going to get busted. You know, I found out years ago, if you're a thug, the police been watching you long before they bust you. You're not slick. I've had people, men in my family, oh, here come the pig. I, 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 I want to sell this crack, and they stopped me for selling this crack. I'm going to shoot him in the head. That doesn't make any sense at all. 
you doing something illegal, uh, morally and illegally wrong. Okay, so we're going to basically sign off now. You know, we just thought we would do this uh, this, this, this particular episode as far as uh, things that you might want to be aware of and how to perhaps organize a more safe and effective uh, protest. And that's the word, effective protest, because, I mean, if it doesn't get anything accomplished, it's kind of a waste of time. So I, on that note, I'm going to sign off until next time. I thank you guys for coming to my channel and my show, Tell It Like It Is. My co-host, Joseph Spencer. Until next time, keep keep thinking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, have a blessed day.